We're continuing series entitled The Red Zone. Football fans, you know what the red zone is. The red zone is that 20 yards right before the goal line. You see, a team will march down the field, the offensive team, and their, their purpose, their, their goal is to make first downs. But once you get within 20 yards of the goal line, it's not a first down you want. You want to score points. In fact, the strategy of how the football game is played changes when you get in the red zone. May I say I believe for every one of us, we're in a red zone moment. Perhaps all last year we struggled, we prayed prayers, and the answer didn't come. We believed God, we held out, we endured, we focused, and we didn't see all that God wanted to do in the situation, our career, our life, our family, but you're in the red zone now. And the strategy ought to change. There is something God wants to do in your life and your family. Today is the day to determine, I'm going to move in and find what God has for me. I'm sure you probably read and heard the news report last week about the man from California that has lived for three months in the Chicago airport terminal. He was afraid to fly home to California, afraid of COVID. So in fear of getting on a plane that he might catch COVID, he lived three months in the airport terminal. I think he had a terminal disease. How about you? <laughs> they asked him, how did you live? Unbeknownst, by the way, to the airport security, they finally discovered him three months later. He said, I would just get food from people. Can you imagine for three months eating Airline pretzels, oh, that's torturous. Sleeping in an airport, the discomfort. But he was so afraid that he might catch COVID, he determined just to stay there. There are places that are meant to pass through and not stay there. An airport terminal is not a place to live. You pass through to your destination. And I wonder if some of us, unintentionally, the, the last year, the economy, the situation, we, we have normalized and we say, you know what? My dream is sidelined. My spiritual purpose is no longer going to come about. And we have normalized and decided to live in a place God said you were to pass through. How easy it is for us to just stay in one situation. I want to ask you. I want to invite you. Don't live a shut down life. Don't be emotionally quarantined. Yes, we put on the mask. But take the mask off of your heart. There's a time in which we can just hunker down and live in a, live in a shell. And God is saying, I never purposed you there. You're staying in the terminal of hesitation, of trepidation, of indecision. And I'm here today to awaken your dream, your prayer, your confidence, your willingness, your, your motivation to become and realize everything God has. You're in the red zone. Push through and become everything God intended you to be. I noticed during COVID, it seems like Emotions are capitalized. People are madder, sadder, gloomier, more critical, lonelier than ever before. Some of us are living in the terminal, pun intended. We're living in the terminal. You stay there, you'll die. It'll become terminal. Live in malaise, your dream will die. Stay disconnected from people and you'll spiritually wither. You're in the terminal. And I want to invite you to catch the next flight out. Begin to move into what God has for you. This weekend, I want to share this thought. I want to speak on this thought. Go for it. Go for it. I want to put that, I want to prophesy that into your spirit. Go for it. Yes. In the red zone, using the Analogy of football again. When you have a third down, you're marching down the field. If by the third down you haven't reached 
the first down, they punt. But when you get into the red zone, when you're that close and you need to win the game, frequently the coach will say, on the third down, we're going to go for it. They don't give up. They don't punt. They go for it. And I believe God wants to put that into our spirit. We need to go for it. If you have your Westover app or you have your Bible and you want to join me in the book of Joshua, chapter number one, let me set the scene. Israel, God's people, under Moses came out of Egypt, but they spent 40 years, 40 years in the terminal called wilderness. They were to pass through the wilderness, not live there, but for 40 years they had been stuck in the wilderness. And then all of a sudden Moses passes on to heaven and God puts a word in Joshua's heart. He says, lead the people in. And Joshua's going to say, we're going to go in the promised land. We're going to go for it. Our time is now. We're not going to stay in the terminal. We're not going to stay in the wilderness. We're going to move into the promised land. I have been to the very spot in the Holy Land where they crossed over. The Jordan River snakes through the Holy Land. And the very spot where they come, the Jordan River flows, and the Bible says it was at the flood stage, so it was, it was a raging river. It was impossible. You couldn't pass it. You wouldn't go through a, a river. Which you, you, you'd lose your family. You'd lose your livestock. You'd jeopardize your life. You can't pass a, a river that's in flood state. And God said, you're going to move through this. You're going to move past the impossible into the dream God has. So the Bible tells us that Joshua told the people, get ready. Let's read verse number 10 and 11. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross over the Jordan here to go and to take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. Two things I want you to notice real quickly. Get ready and take possession. Get ready and take possession. You see, preparation precedes possession. Get ready and take possession. Some of us are praying that God will take us into a new moment, a new career. Get your resume ready. Your resume's not ready, so God's not going to lead you into it. Some of you believe, and I, I, I'm going to become this in my career, then finish the class, go enroll in the course. Yes, get in a life group. You say, I want to grow spiritually. But we're not ready. We're not taking the action. We're, we're, we're sitting, if you please, in an airport terminal. And we're missing the dream. And I summons us. The Holy Spirit is calling us to step forward and today to go for it. There are two quick thoughts I want to deposit in our heart today. I speak to everyone here for Church Online. The first challenge I put to us is this. Be a leading voice. Be a leading voice. The Bible says in verse number 10, so Joshua ordered the officers of the people and told them, go through the camp and tell the people. He ordered them, go through the camp and tell the people. I've pastored military people. And they'll come occasionally. This has happened many times. Pastor, we're going to be transferred. We're waiting for orders. Yes. The scripture tells us the steps of a good person. What are they? They are ordered of the Lord. There's an order God is giving. He's not suggesting. It's not multiple choice. God is saying your spiritual destiny, your goal, the thing that he has created you for and for you to become, he is ordering you to get ready. Here in the Bible, in verse number 10, that word translated out of the Hebrew into English, ordered. The first occurrence that's ever found in the Bible is Genesis chapter number 2. And the Bible says, and God commanded. God is commanding. God is ordering. God is not saying it's optional. God's not saying we can do it wherever we want. There's sometimes God orders. God summons us. This is the moment. This is the time. Step into it. And I challenge us, be the leading voice. Young parents, <laughs> you have kids, 
eight months old, three years old, nine years old, 12 years. I, I admire you. I really do. I admire parents today. I'm telling you, you are the personification of parenthood in books we used to read. I've watched you. I've watched the mother. And an, when a child, a toddler is inconsolable. I, I watch you parents. I mean, you're, you're the gold medal of parenthood. I've watched that mother say, sweetheart, d d don't, don't talk to me and don't shout. Don't know you don't have to talk. Use your words. Use words. Describe how you feel to me. I've watched you. Well, you're great. I've watched the dad and a six-year-old throwing a temper tantrum. Now, listen here, buddy. Listen here. We don't do that in this house. In this house, we, we don't do that. Well, we're going to get through this. I need you. If, if, you, if you're going to act this way, you're going to have two minutes of time out. Parents, I wish you had been my parents. Oh, oh, I wish, I wish I could have been raised by you. Oh, really? Oh, my life would have been less dramatic if you could have been my parents. Here's what my mom and dad said. You better, you better dry it up or I'll give you something to cry about. You better stop. You do that, I'll slap you into next week. I mean, I heard that that's how it came across. I mean, when dad gave an order, I mean, my dad, when he laid down the law, my dad was very patriotic. He believed in the stars and stripes. He'd give you stripes until you saw stars if you didn't do things his way. I mean, he laid down the law. That's the way it was. That's the way it was. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, that's, that's how, that's how I, I grew up. There's never a time I... I told my dad, well, I'll think about it. Dad, that doesn't validate me right now. That's just not where I'm at. No, huh? I grew up, I, I, got, I got whippings by syllable. Some of you know what I'm talking about. I got a whipping by syllable. Every syllable, there was a swat. I am going to tell you if you don't stop it, I will set you a fire. We prayed for small syllable words. I mean, I wish that mama would speak in it or at, but every syllable was a swat. And the longer the syllables were, the more painful it was. That's how I grew up. I wish you were my parents. Yes, I'm saying God's given an order. God has something for you. God is summoning you into a dream. There's a clarion call and God's saying, get off the sideline. You're in the red zone. Push through. Become everything God wants you to be. For a moment, let, let me speak to the men. Men, we have sidelined ourselves. COVID came, shut down. We got out of our men's group. We got out of the rhythm. We got out of the pathway. But in your heart, there is something God is saying. God is doing in men. I call you back. I call you back. Sundays, 9.30 and 11.30 a.m., we have our 24-15 men's class that we are discipling men and say, men, become the spiritual leaders of your home. Get back in your life. You get connected. Guys, let's get, on, let's get on top of the wall. Let's get back into the game. Let's become the spiritual leaders of our home. And sometimes, remember when we were kids, we'd play hide and seek. And all of a sudden, maybe the game's changing or somebody's joining us or we're going to do something else. We'd say, Ollie, Ollie, I'll come free. In other words, it's saying, you won't lose the game. You're not going to be the one that's out of the game. Come in, come in. We're going to reset the game. There's a reset moment now. And I'll tell you, God, by his grace, will forgive any sin that you've stumbled with to get back on the path. And some of us, we feel so beat down and discouraged and condemned. I'm saying, come on, let's get back in the game. Let's become what God wants us to become. Come on, fellas. Come on, fellas, let's go for it. Let's go for it. We, we, we need to be what we should be for our families. I, I can imagine in my mind. Joshua, the Bible says, and, and he ordered why order? Because I believe Joshua had been walking through the camp from time to time, and he overheard conversations around campfires and through the thin wall of a tent or around the other side of a tree, and there was conversation among the Hebrew people saying, you know what? 
the wilderness is not that bad. I really, look at that, look at that raging river. The soil doesn't look any better over there on that side than it does on this side. Yeah. What, you mean, we, we just got used to this. We've already set up camp. We, we've already hauled in firewood. We've already got our routine in the wilderness down. We've acclimated to wilderness living, and it's not that bad. I hope Joshua doesn't lead us over. I'm tired of moving. I'm tired of doing something extra. I'd like to just take it ease right now. I think he had heard that Joshua did. So he sent out the word. We're going to tell the people. We're going to order the people. God never called you here. And I'm here to say, God never called you to spiritual malaise. God never called you to shut down. God never called you to spiritual ease. God never called you to failure. God didn't call you to depression. God didn't call you to discouragement. God has something for you. And I appeal to you. Find it and go for it. Go for it. You know, we can be COVID negative and lukewarm positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We can just get used to, we can get used to the wilderness. Fellas, God doesn't want visiting rights. He wants full custody. He wants full custody. He wants to be your Lord, your Savior. He wants to guide you. He wants you to be the catalyst for spiritual transformation in your family. The Holy Spirit has something new, living, and fresh in your life. Every young adult, every young adult, shake off the mistake of the past. Shake off the culture that tells you you can live for God on your own terms and get in the game and become what God wants you to become. And live the life God wants you to live. To do that, I will tell you, self-included, your mind and your heart will have an argument. And the heart has to tell the mind, mind your own business. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it happens to me. <laughs> yeah, it does. You, you'll hear God say, God will put a challenge on you. You can become God will put a dream in you. You should. Maybe God will tell a couple, you need to get into counseling. You say, yeah, it could be better. We need to make this right. We need to follow God. We, 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 we need to do things different in our home. And then all of a sudden, your mind will talk to you. Well, it's not that bad. Your neighbors don't do it. Most people get along. It's just the way it's done. Your mind will talk your heart out of what God told you. Yeah. Now, God, God speaks to you. You should tithe. You should honor the Lord. I'm going to honor God. I'm going to tithe. I'm going to be faithful. God's dealt with me. I read it in Scripture. And then all of a sudden, your mind talks your heart. You know what? You really need to pay off that credit card. And you need, you've been wanting a new iPhone. And your, your mind will talk your heart out of what God is saying. And the Bible says in James chapter 1, verse number 8, that's being double-minded. And a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. If everything God speaks to your heart, you put to the committee of your thoughts, your thoughts will win. Your hurts, your thoughts, and your disappointments will always argue away faith from your life. Here's how Scripture puts it. Scripture is telling us that ambivalence creates spiritual disappointment. James chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. It says if you waver like a ship on the sea, you know, tossing back and forth. I want you to image, have the image of a ship kind of in when it's a little stormy in the gulf and it's going back and swaying back and forth. And wherever the wind goes, it goes. Just wherever opinions go, wherever culture goes, where, wherever the last friend you talk to, you, you, you want everybody to like it on social media. So you do the things that pleases every people. You're back and forth. You're ambivalent. Here's what Scripture says in James 1 and 7. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Wow. If I'm in ambivalence, God says, I can't answer your prayer. I'll speak to your heart. But I will not answer the prayer until you put your mind where it should be. 
and you listen to God and you listen to His Word, you listen to faith, as long as you're toggling back between faith and fear and faith and logic and faith in your own emotions, God says, I can't answer your prayers. I'm going to wait until you set, you settle. I'm going to wait until you go for it. When you go for it, when you're in the red zone and say, God said it, I'm going after it, I'm going to push through, God says, that's a prayer I'll answer. Thought number two today, as the worship team is going to join us and we're going to declare, I'm going for it. When our worship in a moment, we're going to declare we're going for it. Thought number two is decisions today pay off tomorrow. Decisions today are going to pay off tomorrow. You see, today I'm benefiting from decisions I made in my yesterdays, last year and the year before. They're paying off now because I made the decision there. But sometimes I'm facing the consequence today of the poor, unwise decision I made yesterday. Decisions today are going to pay off tomorrow. And I'm going to ask you, don't wait till May. I'm going to ask you, don't wait till next year. I'm going to ask you today, don't wait till the credit card's paid off. Don't wait until your comfort zone is there. Don't wait until you feel like it's, it's, it's good for me to do this, and I worked it out, and I've got a plan. I'm going to ask you today to make the decision and go for it become everything that God wants you to be. You see scripture in Joshua chapter 1, we read it just a moment ago. This is what the Lord said in verse number 11. You go through and you order Israel. Get ready. For in three days, in three days, you're going to move into it. Now I ask you rhetorically, why does scripture say in three days? Why didn't the Bible say in a few days. Hmm. Why didn't the Bible say in just a little bit? Why is the Bible so specific as saying three days? Why didn't he say, you know, as soon as we can get things together, we're going to move in? No. It's recorded by the Holy Spirit in God's Word. In three days, you're going in. Anytime God is that specific, God, is, God has a message. So we have to ask the question, what is significant about three days? Some of you are already tracking. You're going to the resurrection of Jesus. He was three days. You're right. Three days before the resurrection. But at this time, Jesus had not come. And the resurrection was not there. The New Testament was not there. In fact, at this particular time, the only books of the Bible they had was the first five books of the Bible we call the Pentateuch, Torah. We didn't have Psalms, we didn't have the Minor Prophets, we didn't have Proverbs. So what is, in their mind, in that time when they heard three days, God's saying something. Anytime a number is in Scripture, God says it means something. So in three days, what is the significance of three days versus saying pretty soon? Well, I have to go back. The only books they had was the Pentateuch. Genesis through Deuteronomy. And when they heard three days, they knew what it meant. They knew what it meant. The only three-day reference they had is Genesis chapter 1. Here they are. They're on the brink. They're on the shoreline of, of the Jordan River at flood stage. It's impossible. There's an impossibility. There's a problem. There's a challenge. There's a barricade they cannot solve. And God's purposes are over there. But I'm over here and God says in three days, your impossibility will move. Your impossibility will change. For see, God's going to part the, the Jordan River for them to go through. And God gave them this promise in three days. So what is it about Genesis 1? Three days. The third day day of creation. There it is. On the third day of creation, Genesis 1, 9 and 10, here's what the Bible says. And on the third day, God said, let dry ground appear. Ooh. Wow. It was the third day of creation that all of the whole earth was nothing but water. 
And on the third day, God said, on this day, let dry ground appear. Why was it? God said, on this day, because there's going to be another day that I'm going to tell people, you're going to move in and you're going to have a third day come. And God can take that impossibility, that Jordan River, and he's going to make dry ground appear. God will take you through. And some of us, we're in day one. It seems hopeless. It seems undoable. It seems impossible. You're in day two. You've waited. You've prayed. You've asked God to open the door. You've asked God to heal the relationship. You've asked God to make a way, and it hasn't happened. You're in day two, but the third day is coming. Day three is coming. Day three is coming. Day one, day two, that Jordan is just as raging and just as impossible until day three comes. Some of us were two and a half days into this journey. You're a half a day to your third day. And when you say, God, I'm in the red zone and I'm going to go for it. I'm going in with God. I'm going to follow God. I'm going to do what God says. That's your third day. And heaven opens up and the Holy Spirit comes and he does the impossible in our lives. That's what God wants to do. You're not stuck in day two. God has a third day for you. And I prophesy your third day into your life. Your third day is coming. Divorcee, your third day is coming. You're going to be healed. God's going to restore your heart. God's going to give you back what the enemy took from you. Day three is coming. And decisions today off tomorrow God's going to hold on to you oh hallelujah yes God your third day is coming I'm going to invite you to put your electronic device down put your Bible down stand together with me we're going to worship I want to declare victories around the corner my third day is coming I'm two and a half days I'm two and a half days in this, but my heart hasn't given up. I believe my third day is coming, God, and I'm going to hold out. I'm going to hold out.